Hello, hello, hello. This is Eduonics Angular course coming at you live. Well, not quite live, but coming at you. We got a great, great lesson for you today. Query parameters and um, not a lot of other, just query parameters. Um, again, great course. Stay tuned. But first, this interruption. Um, okay, so you may have been wondering exactly what was going on in the, in the, in the intro there. Um, remember how in the previous lesson I just said, you know, the, the intro was getting kind of stale? Um, I decided to switch it up a bit, you know? Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not too happy with how I switched it up, but um, I promised changes and I delivered. So that's, um, yeah. Anyway, um, query parameters. So query parameters essentially allow us to pass data to our um, routes but it's optional data. So if we do go ahead and pass in data, for example, um, using the uh, URL parameters, right? We have to pass in that data. Otherwise, we can't actually navigate to that component. It won't go to that component, right? Um, now, query parameters allow us to pass data or they allow us to not pass data. In that case, the data is just gonna be null, but we'll still navigate to that component. So that's how it's going to work. So first of all, we're going to have a look at getting query parameters out of the actual, um, out of the actual, um, you know, out of the actual uh, component. So in the component, how we're going to get the query parameters. So let's go ahead and open up our first component here, open up the TypeScript. And right here, after we log the URL parameters, we're going to go ahead and do route dot params. Um, and first of all, right here, we're going to log param, and then we can just do a message like that, we can actually get the actual message. And of course, TS Lint is ruining my life because he wants me to use single quotation marks. There we go. Um, so we, that will just print the actual message itself instead, instead of printing the message object as a whole. Um, now what we can do is not route.params, we're going to do route.queryparams dot uh, subscribe. Again, pass in an observable. It's going to give us an observable. Um, get the query param. There we go. Fat arrow function here. And then here we're just going to do console.log query param. All right, there we go. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add the semicolon there. Save that. Let's do the exact same thing in our second component. All right, there we go. We'll start up that application. All right, let's give it a second here. So essentially, again, you know, if, if you don't know what query parameters are, whoops, we already got uh, we already got the uh, running. Let me go ahead and stop that. Then go back here, and you serve. Um, so essentially, if you don't know what a query parameter is, um, if you ever used um, uh, most websites, um, essentially after the UR the URL, what we're gonna have is a question mark, and then after that, a bunch of different parameters, and those are what query parameters are. So let's go ahead and go to our to Google Chrome here. So now we're in localhost port 4200 slash first hash slash hello, right? And we can see that this is what it's printing here, hello. So we do print the message. But then this is what the, the query parameter that's being printed right there. And we don't actually have any query parameters right now. That's why it's returning this empty object. Now let's do hello and then question mark. And then we can go ahead and do something like um, message two. And that's going to be equal to, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Hello world. All right, there we go. Let's um, navigate to that. And there we go. You can see now that that query parameter does show up. So you do see that essentially um, URL parameters and query parameters serve the same exact purpose, to pass data into our component when we do route to it somehow. The difference, of course, between query parameters and URL parameters is that if we remove this URL parameter, so if we just do slash first, you're going to see that it's going to give us URL not found, so it's not going to match it to the component. Same goes if we pass in just first slash. We have to pass in some kind of data, right? So we have to pass in like G or something. Then it will actually go ahead and take us to our component. Um, query parameters, on the other hand, if we just pass in hello, you see that we even though we don't have any query parameters, it still goes ahead and matches our, our, us to this component. And we don't need to define them um, in our routes array. So we can do hello and then a query parameter like uh, hello one equals two, equals two and then and uh, hello three equals, you know, I don't know, maybe two. Um, and then and 
uh, another message here, we can do something like uh, message equals four, three or something like that. There we go. And you can see that uh, it, do it does go ahead and give us our, uh, our query parameters here. And again, they are optional. So we can have as many as we want and or we can have as little of them as we want. And that essentially is the whole idea behind that. Okay, so to now to pass in some kind of query parameters in our code, what we're going to go ahead and do is navigate to our, well not navigate, go to our app.component.typescript file where we're actually navigating to something using code. And here what we're going to do is um, after we pass in the array of which will be combined to create the URL that we are going to, we're also going to go ahead and pass in another object This is going to be called extras. And it won't give it to us, will it? Because we're not using um, WebStorm. Um, but it is called extras. If we actually do go ahead and uh, go to the definition here, you can see we have extras. It's an optional um, optional parameter that we can insert into this navigate um, navigate field. And inside there, uh, we can go ahead and navigate method, not field. I'm sorry. We can go ahead and uh, pass in a query params object. There we go. There we go. And then we can go ahead and give it a name. So for example, something like uh, I don't know, maybe message two here. And its value is going to be hello world. All right, there we go. Let's add in the spaces that uh, TSLint insists that we have. There we go. Um, don't turn off TSLint, by the way. It just it, it sort of guarantees good code. So it's quite uh, quite useful. So don't turn it off. Um, it, it it may be tempting, but um, in the long run, when you start get coding a lot, it makes sure that you're consistent. You know, you, you it, it guarantees the best practices. Um, all right, there we go. So uh, we do pass this in. Um, let's go ahead and go to Google Chrome here. Um, now we can go ahead and click on these buttons. Let's, uh, for example, uh, go to first. There we go. You can see now that we get this message two. Let's go ahead and go to second. We get. Uh, message two here as well. And uh, generally, there we go. So that essentially is how that works. So uh, we can also go ahead and pass in some data here. So hello like that. And there we go. You can see that we, we, we will go ahead and get um, the URL, the query parameters as well as the URL parameters. So that is, um, that is how that works. Okay. And then finally, to go ahead and pass query parameters in our template, when we click on a link, uh, all we're going to do is go to our template here, go ahead and use the query param directive, query params. Uh, that's going to take in a string with an object with the actual params themselves. So in our case, let's go ahead and pass in something like message uh, first here for the first component. And we need to go ahead and add, put that into quotation marks, message first, and that's going to be something like... Uh, uh, message one, message one, there we go. And now we're going to do pretty much the same exact thing for message two here in the second component, except we're going to change it to message two and message second right here. All right, there we go. Awesome. Let's save that. Let's go ahead and go to Google Chrome. Um, now, if we do go ahead and pass in something like hello here, go to the second component, there we go, it prints hello and message two. And then we can go ahead and uh, go to the first component and it's going to print hello and message first uh, with the message one um, accordingly. All right, awesome. And that is how you work with query parameters in Angular. Okay, so one last thing that we're very quickly, quickly going to go over is that right here in query parameters, we did add this property binding here. And essentially what that, using these square brackets. So essentially what that does, it tells Angular that what we're passing in is a TypeScript object and it needs to handle it accordingly. Um, if we remove these, it's going to treat this as a string and not a TypeScript object. And in result, it's not going to do message first message. It's going to treat every single one of these characters inside here as an individual query parameter. So when we save this, go to Google Chrome, we can go ahead and type in, you know, hello here, right here, go to navigate to first component. There we go. And you can see here that um, it passes in the query parameters. Zero is going to be this. One is going to be the creation mark, 2M, and so on and so on. So essentially, it's going gonna, it's gonna to treat all of that as an individual query parameter and assign it its own separate um, ID um, just using, using a number here. So um, that is why we do need these square brackets in order for it to treat it as a TypeScript object and not just a string. So now, if we do go ahead and do hello, it's going to go ahead and give us the correct um, the correct query parameter and pass it in correctly.
And same goes for router link. We can go ahead and add in the uh, the we can go ahead and add in a property binding using the square brackets and pass in an array much like we do in the code. So we can go ahead and pass in that array. We can remove the slash instead just add a comma there. And we don't even need to use interpolation because it is right now looking in the context of the actual of TypeScript. And we also need to go cover first in quotation marks because it doesn't it's trying to look for first as a variable and it doesn't have a variable. So now when we go ahead and do hello here, go navigate to first, Let's navigate to second first and then back to first. There we go. You can see now that it gives us the exact same result as if we were to do it using uh, with, without the um, without property binding, without the square brackets. And if we remove them, same thing as with query parameters. It's going to treat it as a string and uh, pass in each character individually. So first, there we go. You can see that it gives us it um, individually. That's why we need to go ahead and add in that property binding there for it to treat that as actual TypeScript and not just a string. All right, and there we go. So um, we went ahead and went over query parameters in Angular. Um, I am going to have to apologize here because I, I lied to you. I betrayed you. In the beginning of this lesson, I did say that um, lessons are usually five to ten minutes long. This lesson was eleven minutes, eleven minutes thirty seconds long, or something like that. So I am sorry, but I'm going to make up. I'm, I'm going to make it up in the next lesson where we're going to be going over child routes. Um, that's good. Uh, hopefully that'll that'll make it that that'll make it up to you. All right, I don't want to make this lesson twelve minutes long, so I'm gonna see you next time. Till soon.